So this morning I decided to change the title a little bit to pimp up your workflow. How do we get to understand how programs work? One way is to just read the co code um, top to bottom, uh, read all the files, execute it in your head, remember all the variables, argument names, keep stack in mind. Well, it might work for small projects, but when you have something big, it would take a while. Say, imagine you're joining a um, project that has hundreds of uh, JavaScript files and uh, hundred thousands lines of JavaScript code. Are you going to read all of that before you start working on some feature or fix some bug? How do you even start? The project is so big, you don't know which file do you need. One way of um, understanding how program work is uh, inserting console log statements everywhere. So you open your editor, if you find some function, you put some console log statements, you open the browser, you reload the page, see what's in the console. If it's not what you expected, you do the same over again. Another way is to use debugger and uh, insert breakpoints. Breakpoints are great because y you can in insert them without reloading the page and uh, you can disable them too. But one problem with breakpoints is that they block. So imagine you're debugging a uh, race condition and you have two functions competing and uh, when you step on a breakpoint, it, it just blocks the execution and breakpoint's really not the best tool for that kind of task. So today I'm gonna be showing a few other tools that I believe not so popular and um, I think they're great for understanding how programs run and how they work and they actually allow you to see um, actual state of the program. So the first one is a light table. One cool feature that I like is um, inline watchers. When we read the code, we don't really know what's inside the variable. And uh, light table allows to watch, to select some code and start watching it. And it will show the value in real time as the program ran. So I'm gonna run some demo. On the right side, there's a, there's a P5.js demo. It's a processing library in, in JavaScript. And uh, on the left side, there's a code. And I see the variables, but I don't know what they are. What is other? Is it, is it some number? Well, it's undefined on first click and, and some object on the second click. And you can see lifetime was uh, updating in real time. Here's some velocity property. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's a vector. And it updates in real time as you play around with your code. There's some drag property. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's a number. So that was um, watch select, um, 
what was it? Watch expression. Another cool t tool is uh, inline eval. So it works like this. You just select some code and press command enter, and it shows the last value. Right in the code, not somewhere in the console, but right there. So those were two features of Lighttable that I really like. And uh, I think even if you don't use Lighttable, maybe you should check it out. And uh, if you work on some dev tools, maybe you should implement some of those features in uh, your favorite tool. Timeline. Timeline is a uh, timeline is available in uh, Chrome DevTools, Firefox DevTools, uh, WebKit Inspector. And uh, when people talk about timeline, they usually talk about profiling, uh, performance measurements. I'm going to use it a little bit different. So here's a demo. It's the same web page. It's there on the timeline to record the events. So I want to know, I want to find the function that is responsible for mouse down event or click. And I don't know where it is. I don't know how many files I have. But I can see all the JavaScript events, all the timers, all um, mouse events. So there are way too many, so I just filter down to mouse. And from there, I can jump right to the function that was uh, executed on mouse down. And uh, I didn't read any code before that. So this is a good tool to give you overview of uh, how your program work. When you see a program for first time, you, you don't know where to start. You just you can play around and see what's get executed, but and uh, from there you can jump to the files and functions that you actually want to edit. So another tool is uh, Adobe Brackets Thesis. So it's actually an extension to Adobe Brackets, which is um, uh, um, JavaScript, oh, I'm sorry, which is a um, code editor. So. I'm going to play another demo. I have a game. It's, a, it's just a web page with some JavaScript. And uh, in the editor, you can see there, there are some 21 calls, 22 calls, 23 calls, 24 calls. So this is actually logging all the function calls that are happening on the web page. You can actually see what is running at this time. You can see which functions are not used and uh, which ones are used. And you can narrow down, you can see all the, all the function names. And you can see the arguments. They're all there. 
You don't need to insert hundreds of console logs. From there, you can see that from keyboard input manager, all those uh, callbacks were called. And you can see um, call stack, and you can go up. So that was um, Adobe Brackets Thesis. Another similar tool is available in the WebStorm. WebStorm is a IDE, and um, it has a feature called SpyJS. It is somewhat similar to Adobe Brackets Thesis, but it has a slightly different user interface. I'm going to show you. Oh, what, what, where am I? Hmm. Maybe not. Um, maybe I'm not going to show you. OK. Uh, so ignore that. So it logs all the events on the left column. I speed it up a little bit. It highlights as a light green background the piece, pieces of code that actually ran. So you can see there's a conditional here, and you can see that it didn't run because it doesn't have a background. You can actually see which parts got executed. There are lots of events there. The same as in Adobe Brackets, you can see uh, argument values. That was WebStorm SpyJS. So, uh, well, I think it's all cool, but we know what would be even better, I think. What if I just could play it back? So, uh, oops. OK. So about one year, one year and a half ago, I, I was playing around with uh, one tool. And I called it DOM re Rewind. So say I do some DOM operations. I don't know, change attribute. And um, what if I just play it back and forward and back? And uh, 
So I was working on a tool that captures all the DOM manipulations, stores them, and allows to rewind them. Eventually, I realized it's not really practical because I only capture DOM. I, I, I don't capture JavaScript events. I don't capture input. Say, if there's some something going on in set interval and it tries to access the DOM and I rewind it, it just it will try to do something with the element that is no longer there. So it didn't really work out. And uh, I just kept this as an unpursued project. So hopefully, fortunately, there are some other two. tools out here. So this is this is a timeline again in the WebKit inspector. And I'm running WebKit nightly. I have a they have a hidden feature. It's called web replay. At this stage it's doesn't do that much. What do you all see? So I, I basically played back as it was. It captured all the user input, all the non-deterministic values, such as math random or any time-related information, and placed exactly the same as it was. For now, it's all it does, but it wouldn't be amazing if you can just rewind back, edit some code, play it back, maybe it even loop some part, so maybe loop some animation and tweak around with values, and it would just play. And you don't need to hit refresh all the time. So this was a current implementation in a WebKit Nightly. And I'd like to finish with a, a video. Users frequently encounter bugs in web applications, but don't report them because it's difficult to write down reproduction steps. A program's inputs are often difficult to enumerate. For example, this video game's behavior is determined by user input, random numbers, and social media API queries. Timelapse is an integrated debugging tool that can precisely capture and reproduce entire program executions. To record, a user opens the timelapse drawer and starts and stops recording by clicking a button. Instead of writing reproduction steps, users can record an execution while they demonstrate interactive behaviors of interest. Recordings can be saved to or loaded from file and shared by email or bug tracking software. Recordings can be replayed on demand using time-lapse's navigation affordances. Time-lapse visualizes program inputs over time using several linked views that provide different levels of detail. An overview shows the entire recording and its inputs using a stacked line graph. Each input category is visualized with a heat map timeline. Users can adjust the displayed interval by adjusting zoom settings with link sliders or by scrolling horizontally and vertically. Each circle can be inspected to reveal the inputs it represents. Lower level recording details are also available. 
The current replay position can be changed by dragging the red slider in any view or by double clicking an input circle. Isn't that amazing that you can, it's, well, I hope at some point you'll be able to just rewind back and play it again. And if it doesn't work, change the value, play it back. All we do, we basically hit refresh all, all day long. And uh, I think it's not necessary. Time-lapse is, uh, is now called uh, web replay. And uh, it doesn't yet allow you to rewind, as I showed you. But I, I hope we'll get there eventually. I hope it, web replay will change the way we develop web apps. Thank you.